Conditional formatting is one of the most powerful features in Excel, yet 90% of Excel users don't know how to use it to its full capacity. That's why in this video, I'm going to show you not just how to use it, but also the best tips and tricks so you can get the most out of it. First up, let's start with the basics and to find conditional formatting, you just need to go to the home tab and click on conditional formatting. Now let's get started with this data set, which you can download for free in the video description. So let's suppose that our manager is asking us to highlight the revenues that are above 20,000 in green. So for this, we would select them with control shift down all the way to the bottom there and go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and let's use the default greater than. Let's type in 20,000 here. And let's say we want them in green as that's positive if they're higher and we'll click on OK. That was easy enough, but now what if we also want to highlight those that are exactly 20,000 like this one over here. So changing it from just greater than to greater than or equals to. For this, if we go to conditional formatting again under highlight cell rules, you'll notice that we don't have greater than or equals to together as one. So we'll actually just go over to manage rules. So we set up this rule for the greater than 20,000, as you can see over here, but now we want to edit it. So under edit rule, we're going to switch from greater than to greater than or equals to and hit on OK. Hit on apply and OK again. Now you can see that 20,000 is also included. We show this to our manager, but he doesn't like this color. Instead, he wants to use our branded orange color. So for this, what we'll do is go to conditional formatting, manage rules, and we'll change this by going to edit again. And this time around, we'll click on this format button. And here we have a ton of different options to customize, but we want to go for the fill color. Let's say we change that to an orange. You can see the preview down below. We'll hit on OK and OK again and hit on apply there. Now you can see what that looks like. Overall, what's awesome about conditional formatting is that it's fully dynamic. So if I go ahead and change this revenue figure to 10,000 say, you'll notice that it's no longer highlighted in orange as our formula is updating. And speaking of formatting, another great way to visualize our findings is with templates like the ones HubSpot is kindly providing us. Using the link in the description below, you can get multiple Excel chart templates completely for free. In the download, you'll find an Excel file with the instructions on using the template alongside the chart types you might need to visualize your data. From here, you can easily modify the data and the charts will automatically change. These templates can either have one column of data or multiple depending on your needs. I personally find this template useful for deciding which chart type showcases my data best as it's quite unusual to have a template that shows that many chart types at once. So if you want to check these out, head over to the link in the description below to download them completely for free and level up your Excel game. And thank you to HubSpot for sponsoring this video. One thing that seems to bother our manager is that we currently only have the highlighted cells in column H. Instead, he would like the entire row to be highlighted when it's supposed to be greater than 20,000. So let's put the goal over here as 20,000. And from here, let's go ahead and select this whole area. So all of the values with control shift down all the way to the bottom. Under conditional formatting, let's go over and first clear the current rule so we don't get it mixed up. And now we'll just create a new one. From here, we're starting from scratch. So we'll click on this last one, use a formula to determine which cells to format. And let me move this a bit. And the formula that we're going to use is that this value over here has to be greater than the 20,000 goal that we set. That said, we want this to move down. So we're just gonna take that dollar sign there and delete it from the number. So this way we only have it on the H, meaning it stays in this column, but it can move down. Then under formatting, let's just go ahead and change the fill color to orange so we can see what it's actually doing. And we'll hit on OK there. 
Now you can see we don't have just that one cell selected, but rather the whole row as well. So I can change this to say 10,000 and you'll notice that it does automatically change as well. Similarly, because the goal we typed it on the side for a cell here, I can change this to say 50,000 and you'll notice how it all changes. Same thing with say 35,000. Next up, suppose our manager is asking us to highlight the top 10 revenue values. So we would select that column over here with control shift down and under conditional formatting, we can use the other default, which is the top bottom rules and go for the top 10 items. Let's go ahead and put those in green and hit on OK. We show this to the manager, but he's changed his mind and he's saying just the top five now. So we can go back in there and under manage rules, instead of the top 10 that we have there, we're gonna click on edit. And it's very simple to change that to a top five, for example, we can even switch to a bottom or make it a percentage of the range. We're happy with this, so I'm just gonna hit on apply and close. Now you can see we only have five selected. Actually, we have six selected here. I think that might be because these are the same value. So if I change this to say 30,000, you'll notice that we now have just five. One feature very few people know about is conditional formatting for dates. So over here, we have some due dates. Let's suppose that we need to pay our employees by this specific date. So what we can do is select the whole area with control shift down and under conditional formatting, highlight cell rules and click on a date occurring. So over here, what we can do is say everything that's this month, for example, we want it highlighted in red so we don't forget. So this month in red, same thing with in the past few days, maybe you've yet to pay them or sometime in the future. So let's leave it at next month for now. And what's nice here is that it's dynamic. Currently I'm in February, but when I open this Excel file in March, the conditional formatting is going to update to then. Next up, moving to some more advanced features. Over here, you can see that we have the percentage change and our manager is asking to add some icons so we can see whether it's up or down. So what we can do here is go to conditional formatting and click on icon sets. Let's suppose that we're gonna use um, this one right over here. So we'll just click on that. It all looks okay, but when you look closer at the data, it doesn't look very good in that some values are positive like these over here, but they're still showing even as red or yellow. So something needs to change here. We'll go to conditional formatting and under manage rules. Let's go ahead and edit this so we can see what's going on. So you can see right now it's based on percent, which isn't quite what we would want. Instead, let's suppose we want it by number. So when the value is greater than zero, let's change this to just greater than zero is green. When it's greater than or equals to zero in number format, it's going to be yellow. And basically when it's less than zero, it's in red. So we're happy with that. We'll hit on okay and apply. And now we can close out of that. So you can see now it makes more sense. At zero, it's yellow. When it's negative, it's red. And when it's positive, it's in green. Finally, there is one last table. Over here, you can see that we have the sales by country for a specific month. Now let's suppose we wanna see these January sales. You might think of going to conditional formatting and just going by color scales. I personally don't like them too much. That's because they're quite overwhelming with the number of colors that they have. Even the ones that are in a single color, I can't really tell the difference there between 105 and 92,000, for example. That's why, in my opinion, a better alternative are data bars. So we'll go up over here, and now you can see much better exactly how big these numbers are. Let me click on this one over here. One downside of data bars is that they really only apply well for something like a month, not so much a trajectory over time. That's where our bonus feature comes in, which are spark lines. So let's take a look at how to use those. Over here to the side, let's go over to insert and click under spark lines to the line there. So the data range that we want is this data over here. Let's suppose all of Spain across the seven months. And we want it to be over here as the result. 
We're okay with that, so we'll click on OK. Now we can see the full trend for Spain. We can even drag this down across all of the other countries and the total. That's not all though, I can go to the Sparkline tab and switch from line to a column and even highlight things like the high point as well. Awesome! Now that you're proficient in conditional formatting, you might want to test your Excel skills with an Excel interview test that you can find for free over here. Or if you're not quite ready yet, you can take our Excel course over here. Hit that like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.